So let's see if you know how to solve this math problem. So what we have here is three triangles, and we're trying to determine the exact length from A to B. So here is one triangle right there, then we have this smaller triangle, and then we have this other triangle right here. And of course, you can see the information. This uh, triangle has uh, the lengths of 8 and 15, and this triangle has 8 right here and 6 right here. And again, we're trying to determine the exact measure from A to B. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 18, B is 25, C is 19.7, and D is the square root of 389. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. The correct answer here is D, which is the square root of 389. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. And if you answered with uh, C, which is 19.7, well, you probably were on the right track. You see, if you take the square root of 389, you're going to get a decimal uh, that is 19.7, and then, of course, this continues on. So this is not the right answer. That's an approximation. We're looking for the exact answer, which is D, and, of course, I will explain this as we get into the video. Now, let's uh, go ahead and establish a few objectives for this video. So the first thing that I want to do is to make sure you understand what a right triangle is, also, I want to make sure that you understand what the Pythagorean theorem is, all right? So you can use this with right triangles. That's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And then the last thing that I want to make sure that you understand is uh, this word exact when it comes to mathematics. So let's go ahead and get into the solution now. So to solve this problem, the first thing that you need to understand is that the triangles that we are dealing with are all right triangles. So anytime you see a triangle with a little square in the corner, like we have in these three triangles right here, that means that these triangles are right. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that this angle where this square is at is 90 degrees, all right? So a right triangle is a triangle uh, that uh, has an angle of 90 degrees. And another thing about all triangles, that the sum total of all the angles is always 180 degrees. So that is what a right triangle is. But uh, when we have a right triangle, what you can think about, or what you should always think about, is something called the Pythagorean Theorem. All right, it's the Pythagorean Theorem. And this is indicated by this formula right here. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So anytime you see a right triangle, you want to be thinking about this theorem or formula. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and see how this works because this is going to be the secret in order for us to solve the problem. So here is a right triangle, and you can see we have three sides, three, four, and five. Now, this is a real right triangle. In other words, uh, some triangles, you don't know if they are right because they have to hold this uh, special relationship right here. But this particular triangle is a right triangle, and these are three sides uh, to this right triangle. So the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, and it will always be opposite of this little square or the 90-degree right angle but it's pretty easy to identify because it's always the longest side. So this uh, formula, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, or theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, establishes a relationship between these sides. Now, the biggest thing that you need to know is that the longest side of a triangle is always c. Okay, so these uh, variables, a, b, and c, are representing the sides of the triangle. So the longest side, or hypotenuse, is always C. So these uh, two shorter sides can be A or B. It really doesn't uh, make a difference. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this relationship. And uh, here we have three. We'll call this A. And this other side, we'll call this B. And, of course, five will be equal to uh, C. And let's plug this in to the Pythagorean theorem. 
And basically what it says is that if we square uh, these sides, these uh, shorter sides, so we're going to take 4 and square it, and 3 and square it, then we're going to add these up. It's going to be equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So 3 squared, that of course would be our a squared, plus b squared, so 3 squared plus 4 squared, right? We're just going to substitute these numbers for these variables, is equal to 5 squared, which of course is c squared. So again, when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, the biggest thing is to make sure you have the right uh, value for c. But uh, let's go ahead and just check this math here real quick. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25, right? So 5 times 5, 25, 4 times 4 is 16, and 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 plus 16, of course, is 25. So this is the relationship that you will always have when you have a right triangle, right? So this is, again, the Pythagorean theorem, and uh, this is going to be how, or this is the relationship that we need to use in order to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and start uh, getting these legs of this triangle right here. Okay, so to figure out this side AB, what we need is this side and this side, right? So as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and just draw this a little bit better. So we're trying to determine AB, the exact measure for um, A to B. So to do that, we have a right triangle. We need to get this side and this side. So if we have these two smaller sides, well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this longest side or the hypotenuse uh, is right here. But in order to do that, we actually have to get the hypotenuse uh, or the uh, C values for these two smaller triangles. So let's go ahead and focus in on this triangle right here. Okay, so uh, this side right here of this smaller triangle is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So let's solve for C, and we have the two smaller sides. So we have 8 and 6. So we're going to plug this in to the Pythagorean theorem and solve for this uh, length right there. So that's going to be 8 squared, right, plus 6 squared, and that'll be equal to C squared. So 8 squared is 64, plus 6 squared is 36, and that is equal to C squared. So 64 plus 36 is 100. So C squared is equal to 100 to solve this quadratic equation for C. All we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So C will be equal to the square root of 100, which of course is 10. Now, although this is a quadratic equation, technically the root would be positive and negative 10, but uh, all we need is the positive value. Okay, so that is what C is equal to, or the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. So now we're going to do the same thing to figure out this uh, side or this hypotenuse of this triangle. So let's go ahead and do that uh, right now. So again, uh, we are talking about right triangles. So we can't use the Pythagorean theorem unless we have a right triangle and all three of these triangles are right. Uh, again, we can see that by this little square in the corner. So we're going to have 8 squared plus 15 squared is going to be equal to C squared. So let's go ahead and do the math here. So 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225, and of course that's going to be equal to C squared. So 64 plus 225 is 289, and that is equal to C squared. So to solve for C, we will take the square root of both sides. So now we have to pay real attention here because we're going to start talking about uh, what it means to find the exact value. So when we take the square root of c squared, we get c, which is right here. And then, of course, we have the square root of 289. And notice I'm just uh, leaving my answer like this. So the square root of 289 is an exact value because if I go into my calculator, what I have here is an irrational number. So if you go into your calculator and get a decimal for this, well, that is an approximation because this decimal is non-terminating and non-repeating. So if you write a decimal down here, that will be an approximation. If I want the exact value, well, I need to leave it like this. And this is exactly what we need to do to get the final answer. So I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification 
This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. So now that we've figured out the sides of this triangle right here using the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out the exact measure from A to B, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we figured out that this side is 10 and this side is uh, the square root of 289. And remember, uh, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle. So this is uh, going to be C. And this can be A, and this can be B, or this can be B, and this can be A. It doesn't make a difference as long as your hypotenuse is C. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the exact measure from A to B. So we're just going to go ahead and plug this in to the Pythagorean theorem. So we have the square root of 289 squared plus 10 squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so the square root of 289 squared is uh, 289 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100, and that is equal to C squared. So 289 uh, plus 100 is 389. So it's going to be 389 is equal to C squared. So to solve uh, this uh, equation for C, all we're going to do is take the square root of both sides. So C will be equal to the square root of 389. Now remember, I said that we want the exact answer. So we need to leave our final answer as a square root, right? Because if we go into our calculators and uh, get a decimal, well, this is an irrational number and you're going to have an approximation. But uh, not all square roots are irrational numbers. In other words, if we had the square root of 25, the answer here is five. So of course this is exact, but something like this where you're going to have a decimal is uh, an irrational number. So again, if you're asked for the exact answer, you have to leave your final answer as a square root. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. All right, so I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.